And um, looking back at my career, I can go from, of course, the Giro Tour on the Worlds of '87 would be the highlights, of course. You know, but you know, for me, I look back at my career as being uh, the highlights being 13 years long, from '81 to '93, and everything that happened during that that period was basically a, um, an incredible journey for me. Um, but it was good times, it was bad times. Even the bad times were good times because it was it made the future better. So for me, um, it's difficult to pinpoint uh, a highlight. But of course, '87 would be, of course, the highlight for everybody because it's um, that was the year I basically made history by becoming the second person in the history of cycling to be to winning the Giro Tour and the Worlds in the same year. Wonderful. And I, I guess returning home must have been a big celebration. Returning home was an incredible. Um, uh, an incredible thing, thing altogether. Like when you, when I was told I was going home for um, for a civic reception, I thought, well, you know, I'm gonna look stupid going home, and all the Irish people are all in Paris uh, at the finish of the tour. So who's gonna be at home? And I arrived home, and there was nearly a million people in Dublin to uh, to welcome me home. So um, like all those images of my homecoming, uh, uh, absolutely incredible. Like it's all kind of you know stupid slogans. Road for president. Uh, Welcome home, our hero. Um, you know, it was absolutely uh, amazing, and those memories will live with me forever. Okay. Is there anything that in your, is there any superstitions that you carry as a cycle within the lucky charm? Um, no, but um, you know, I, I used to every time I'd go to start of a race, I'd always kiss my medal and stand it across. You know, um, you know, I do it today. You know, when I'm whenever I'm doing something, it's just something I had and. Uh, um, if you look at any footage of me when I'm racing, obviously before time trials, that was the last thing I always did. It was basically uh, just kind of keep me safe. Um, but um, you know, number 13 was fairly, uh, um, fairly present in my career. That I had a 13 year career. Started cycling when I was 13, 13 to my first tour, 13 to my last tour. There's loads of 13s throughout my career, but I'm not at all superstitious. I played lottery on, on Friday 13th, but never haven't won it yet. And after those 13 years, was there, was the, what, what was it that finally made you decide to stop becoming an elite um, sports professional and kind of call it a day? Um, what pushed me finally to retire was I started seeing danger. I think as you get older, you have family, you start seeing danger, you, be, you become more conscious of danger. And um, in this sport, when you start uh, backing off, it gets dangerous because you... Um, I was going down hills, for example, and I was saying, oh, maybe there's water in the corner, or maybe there's gravel on the corner, or maybe it might fall off. So uh, you're getting uh, get too cautious, and um, you start making mistakes. So uh, at the end, I was basically saying to myself, well, I've done this career, I've had this fabulous journey, um, I haven't broken a bone in my body, and I don't want to fall off now. And um, it became more and more difficult for me to, to race at a high level, because um, I want to win. And when you're backing off on the sense, you can't win. So I decided I'm better off stopping. Um, and was it difficult to let go of that feeling? Do you still cycle as much now? And what does cycling still mean to you? For me, um, my, my, my career has gone uh, like full cycle. I started off cycling when I was 13, and I discovered this, the, the passion and the joy uh, of cycling. Um, the, 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 the countryside, the, the freedom, the camaraderie between, uh, between cyclists. Then I had my career, which was, uh, of course, um, I said to my friends, I said to my comrades, had a lot of opposition. I had a lot of uh, opponents in the different, different races, but nevertheless, it was a f fabulous journey. And uh, when my career now is over, uh, it's come, become once again my, uh, my, my, my way of uh, <sighs> letting the air out, uh, enjoying life, enjoying my cycling, and I, you know, I love riding bikes with my kids, with, with friends, um, I organise cycling holidays when I'm with my people, my clients on my holidays. I love riding my bike with them. So for me, it's um, it's about uh, sharing my passion now more than uh, anything else. It's um, you know, it's uh, it's an incredible sport, and uh, I think um, you really have to kind of do it to believe it. But um, for me, it's uh, I'm just delighted that somebody one day said, "Stephen, ride your bike. It's good, good fun," and uh, here I am today. Well, you know, when you're talking about um, uh, people I would meet, there'll be kind of kids who are getting into cycling. Um, I wouldn't be giving them the same advice as I'd be giving to a kind of 40, 50 year old client that's coming out to my camp for, for holiday. Uh, the guy coming out that's 45, 50 out to a camp, I, I was saying to him, enjoy it. Um, you know, just make sure you don't overdo it. 
because um, you know it's fun, but um, you know you, you can't become a professional at starting off cycling when you're 50. But you can have a good fun on it. You can enjoy it. When a young kid comes out, I'll be telling him, you know, just to enjoy because the day is going to come when you're going to have to start looking at the heart monitor, the watt meter, uh, your diet, and that's when it gets complicated and it gets kind of a bit messy, and uh, you've got to be very dedicated. So when you're a young uh, kid, just to enjoy it, and uh, you have a natural fitness, so um, enjoy it. And then hopefully then if your time does go on, and you have an opportunity, well then you will, um, you'll have the kind of the, uh, the you'll have the, um, the courage then to actually to knuckle down and uh, look at the watts, look at your heart monitor, and do the high-tech the high training that's needed uh, to get there. Uh, how is Oh, right, sorry. Yeah. Come on. Uh, interview 5-6-2. No take on the board. Yeah, no. We, oh, that's what I'm just saying, Sam. Okay. okay, quiet. So, what's it like? Uh, what's, what have the past few days been like? Um, have you enjoyed riding with the guys? And, and how's it to be riding around Southern Spain this time of year? Well, you know, riding around this area has been absolutely magnificent. And uh, I must say, when, when I was asked by there to be to come to come along and uh, join Tim Harris, uh, Angelo Furlong and uh, Oscar Pejero. I thought, well, okay, well, I know Tim Harris, but the other guys I don't know, but generally when cyclists get together, it's, uh, it's never a dull time. And, um, you know, different nationalities, um, the language, uh, sharing the passion. Um, but, you know, it's always interesting to discover these things. And I, I must say that um, I'm not at all disappointed because I've had uh, three fantastic days. I mean, um, I've learned more about the, the individuals that I learned in the 12 years. I rode my bike with them, with the guys, some of the guys. So, um, you know, I did, never knew for long was a European champion for man biking. Uh, I never knew uh, Oscar Pero could do a wheelie on the back wheel, you know? Um, you know, uh, you see all these things and you say, well, yeah, like, and this, this is what cycling is all about. You have these guys in Lycra, you watch them on television winning races, and you look at them as being monuments, and in fact they're just normal people. And it's great they've had the opportunity the last couple of days to be here in one location. Um, okay, up early every morning, you have a, a long agenda, but it's all, uh, it's all fun, it's all, um, everyone just kind of goes along with the flow of things. And that's really what a cyclist is all about, because um, I think so many people take things too seriously today. And it's great to have um, a group of people who are athletes, uh, there's sound people, there's cameramen, there's uh, sponsors, there's partners, there's suppliers, there's uh, clients all together here to make one production. And uh, it's amazing how everybody gets on together. So I'm, you know, I'm really, really delighted that I've come here. And unfortunately, it's coming to an end. You're such a charmer. Yeah. <laughs> that was brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> um, okay, that was amazing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's say. <laughs> Um, what about, um, what about, um, what about, oh no, we've talked about we've it. We've kind of done it, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just thinking this way. Have we got a good crown? Mark, please. Interview 5, take 3. Good ball. Southern, and second. Southern, and second. It's having a snooze. <laughs> so since, since you um, stopped um, after the 30 years of being a professional athlete, have you got any guilty pleasures nowadays? Um, yeah, I could probably say I haven't, but to be honest with you, I probably have, you know, and I think uh, maybe the last few days people have found out just one or two of them, you know, but um, probably when I started cycling, it was nice because I had a sweet tooth, so um, by riding my bike uh, meant I was burning off the calories I was eating uh, by eating sweets, cakes, ice creams, chocolates, whatever. Um, during my career, you got to be restricted a little bit, and then when your career is over, you kind of say, well, what, what about it? It's just one more. <laughs> and sometimes it gets a bit out of hand, I must, I must admit. And I, I, I can't obviously, you know, after what you guys have seen the last few days, I can't kind of ignore it and say it doesn't exist. But yes, there is a certain addiction there to, 
to chocolate cakes, ice cream cakes, sweets, jelly beans, <laughs> ice cream, Coca Cola, all kinds of stuff, you know. So it's um, it's um, I have got a, I have definitely got a, a sweet tooth problem, yeah. <laughs> well done, man. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I felt like a chapter there for a minute. Yeah. Fair enough. We got loads. Yeah.